Okay. J O N, we got to get it started. Let's do it. Play the music. Play me some Pimpin' Man. Got a very special guest in the house with us today. Won't bring number legends through here. Ooh, big number, legends. Number big legends coming through. Big here. legend. Hood legends, ghetto legends. Pioneers. Ghetto superstars. Black excellence. Come on, man. That's what we own today, man. Come on, man. We know how to celebrate. Come on, man. Our anniversary. Yeah. 50 years of yeah. hip hop. So we went and got an official, legit hip hop pioneer. Come on, man. From one of my favorite crews of all time. What? The Juice Crew. What? You already know who it is. You look and then you like, oh no, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. This is a real yes, official he did. hip hop legend, man. If legend. you ain't never seen one of the coolest brothers that ever spit on the microphone, Ooh. then you might not know that we got Big Daddy Kane in there with us today, man. Yeah. Hey man, that's it. We gotta salute you, bro. We gotta salute. We gotta salute, bro. We gotta salute. Come on, man. Yes, man. Yes. Back. Yes. It's an honor and a privilege to have you in here with us today. Nah, glad to be Come here. on, man. Yeah, man. An icon. Put it down. Made me want to chain this big. Come on, man. Bro, when y'all was playing cards in the video and you won the chains, I was like, man, he already got a chain. He don't need that chain. <laughs> Damn, he don't need that chain. That's how you do this on the head. You taking it out, man. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, you you always been one of the coolest, man. Like, you always had spit your rhymes and you, you never fucked them up. It sounded just like you was listening to the CD and you still hitting the dances at the same time. So you get another salute just for that. It take a lot to rap that shit that you rap, the way that you rap it, and not and jump in and hit the dance move. Perform. Come on, man. Perform it. Fall back, get caught, get man. back up. Man. On, some, man. on some hip hop James Brown type on, shit. Man. That's he, what we trying to with do. With the too. perfect flat top. Come on, man. That's what we trying to do too, yeah. yeah. These kids can't dance long than 15 seconds. <laughs> you see them with the little TikTok that quick. That's all they can do. Come on, man. This man has spit a whole album and hit all that shit. The whole show. In breath control, but it's on the sound. Appreciate Come it, on, bro. Appreciate it. Now, Appreciate I don't think people look at the technical aspects enough. I think we too quick to like be like, oh, well, we ain't, we ain't on that no more. Like the young people, if y'all go back and like just look and see, like, yeah, you was definitely a game changer. Well, I mean, that's what it's, it's really all about, you know, just really studying your craft, studying your history so you know how to better your future. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I was doing back then, I was studying James Brown, I was studying Marvin Gaye, um, uh, Barry White, you know, several others, you know, and trying to bring elements from soul and R&B into hip hop that no one had seen before. Because, yeah. you know, pretty much everybody from the generation prior to mine uh, was basically, I guess, following what Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five did, you know? Right. The era before me would be like the LL, Houdini, uh, Run DMC, you know, they were like right. following what, you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five was doing, you know, those right. type of cats, Treacherous Three and those dudes. You don't know who the hell I'm talking about, do you? It's all good, though. It's all good, though. It's all good, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's all good, But I know you don't come on. No, 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 no. Listen, I, I, just, I just spit the names. I just spit the names. You can look them up later. Houdini, I was like, who the fuck? No, yeah, see, you know yeah, I Houdini. spit the names. I heard of Houdini. No, because you, you be playing the song. The freaks come out at night. That, that's, you. Oh, that's my ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shit, at least you're paying them. Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't know who they are, at least you're paying them. I respect that. Now, people always talk about how great of a lyricist you are. I always wanted to ask you, like, who was your inspiration? Who who showed you how to rap? Or who did you hear rap that made you say, shit, I want to do that? Um, back then, there was a group called the Cold Crush Brothers. Most definitely. And um, I wasn't even Kane then. I was actually using Tony T. Yeah, this is 82, you know? And um, when I first heard them, and I heard this cat, Grandmaster Kaz, you know, and he was like, um, um, Grandmaster Kaz, captain of the four. Another nigga couldn't touch me if he had a rhyme store, even if he had a plant manufacturer of rhymes. They couldn't make them no better than I make mines. I was like, yeah, I'm doing my shit all wrong, you know? <laughs> like, and I'm like, yeah, I need to start all over because I'm not that nice. Mm. And that's who really inspired me, you know? Yeah. 
Damn. Shout out to Grandmaster Cash, yeah. That's kind of where you took the uh, the bragging shit of just, you know, talking the shit about you being better than another MC. Yeah, I shit. mean, Cash, like, his sarcasm was like that shit you hear in the barbershop or the pool hall. Okay. You know, he had that type of Flash sarcasm, yeah. you know? Like that I'm shit. six one and a half, no good at math, say rhymes to myself when I'm taking a bath. Got true clientele, finesse, and clout, and I don't get into shit that I can't get out. You know, that type of, you know, so the sarcasm yeah. was just, so, so, you know, so that, that you know what I mean? The, like, what we look at now, like the punchlines, that's, that's kind of like where that kind of yeah. came from. I think Grandmaster Cass was pretty much the first uh, all around dope MC. Like, um, to me, and I say this repeatedly um, until eternity, Melly Mel is the most important MC in hip hop. Mm because prior to him, it was always about the DJ. You know, Flash and the Furious. Um, okay. You know, um, Charlie Chase and the Coke. It was, always about, um, it was always about the DJ, and then he would have an MC. Once Melly Mel started becoming lyrical, where you, now you're listening to what the MC's saying, he not just dip, dip, die, and on and on and on. He's actually <laughs> spitting some bars. So good, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like what he patterned in 77 is pretty much what the blueprint for every MC up until about 2013, you know, when the, the Migos, I think, changed it to something different, you know. But I mean, yeah, I think he's the most important MC, but he had his one particular style. Kaz was that dude that just pretty much could just, you know, do everything great. You know, he was like um, lyrical when it came to the conscious stuff, lyrical when it came to the battle stuff, lyrical when it came to girls. Like the first girl rhyme, I, I mean, first girl rhyme I heard was something from him called Yvette. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Let me, I wanted to ask, what would be your definition of a sucker MC? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite phrases from hip hop in all time. <laughs> well, you know, back then you had, um, you had um, sucker MCs and you had biting MCs, you okay. know? And you had um, whack MCs, you know. The whack MC he was the dude with the real corny rhymes that you know <laughs> nobody wanted. You know, the sucker MC, you know, um, was the dude. You know, like, like pretty most lots most lots, most of the time had someone writing for him. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They had writers back then too. Come on, you know? man. And then the biting MC was the one that was biting like a rhyme I heard you say at a party. I said at another party next week. Still that was the biting MC. Oh, yeah. sucker MC. Sucker, sucker MC. MC. Sucker ass MC. <laughs> <laughs> so the nigga here sucker MC and he know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. He like, nah, I, I made these up. Nah, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, 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 like, you know, like, like, like a sucker MC, it could be referring to a whack MC or it could be referring okay. to someone that got someone writing for them. So y'all didn't respect the, the nigga having a writer for them? No. Nah, nah, no. Nah. That's crazy because you wrote for rhymes for, for like rappers, for, right? Yeah, I wrote for other rappers, yeah, yeah. But you gotta understand. But let me explain though. You're talking about hip hop, you know what I'm saying, when it's a street culture. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. You know what I'm saying? Now we're making records. Yeah. So it's a real music genre. Okay. Right. And but see, it's a difference when you're like, hip okay. out. As a music genre, most people, a lot of you ask a lot of people, who's their favorite singer? A lot of people will say Luther Vandross. Damn near all his shit was written by someone else. I did learn that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he still was one of the greatest vocalists, you know. So because that's we talk about the music genre. Right. Now when we talk about hip hop on the street right. level, yeah, it's like you know me and you battling at a party right, and right. someone else writing for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You 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 just suck at MC. Right. You know, or you 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 saying the rhyme I heard him say two weeks ago. You right. a biting MC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like now it's a hip hop is a genre, so it's different. You look right. at it differently now. Right. You know? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Man, that's, that's real though. Now you gotta you though. gotta give me some of your favorite Juice Crew stories, cause that's that's a that's a hell of a crew. Oh man, I mean, Juice Crew, I. There's so many moments, you know, watching um, when Mr. Magic get high. When Magic get high, he the funniest person on the planet. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he curse everybody out. You know, F you, you not down no more. Yeah, yeah, he was a, yeah. 
he like he was one of the funniest dudes on the planet. And then you know, um, Biz, you know, rest in peace, man. Like, Nobody beats the Biz. Y'all, y'all have worked with him before, man. Right? Yeah, most definitely. So you know, it's like it's like Biz the type of dude where you know, you looking at you know his features and you just see an easy win, till he starts snapping. Right. And then right. you see you in for a long night. Right. right. Cause he yeah. got jokes out. He got jokes below. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you know, you look at Biz, you be like, oh yeah, I'ma tear his ugly ass up. And guess what? He yeah. on you. He on. You. He tear you up. <laughs> tear you out the frame. Man, That's Biz came and do Wild and Out, and he did like he stayed like the whole week. He did like all the episodes. Cause you know him and Nick were real cool. You know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Biz. Like real talk, man. Word. Word. Yeah. Like um. Yeah, I started rapping in 82, and I used to go around everywhere, you know, battling everybody. Um, couldn't get a record deal. Uh, sent in demos, even met with, um, I think it was Nia Records, you know, everything to try to get a deal. Couldn't get on. And then I ended up meeting this dude that my man had been bragging about for the longest. I was sick of him telling me about him. He told me dude was across the street. I go and meet Biz, ask him for a battle. After the battle, he was like, yo, you dope. You need to get down with me, man. I do a lot of shows in Harlem, Bronx. If you get down with me, I promise you one day I'm gonna get a record deal. And as soon as he got on, he put me down and got me a record deal. What, what was your reaction to that verse on Vapors when he told the Big Daddy Kane story? I wrote it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I'm saying that, I know you wrote it, but the way he delivered that shit, it was so you know colorful and visual. Um, well, um, that, you know, because it, it's like, I kind of, that one I kind of did in, in my style a little bit. You know, I, I had some of his elements in there, but that was kind of like, Nobody Beats the Biz would probably be my favorite. That shit's so Because cool. that's, that's Biz. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. Like, that's Biz, like saying, yo, I want it to be like, a zooka 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 zian. A zooka zooka. Now, that's what the fuck I got to go off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, you know, we we got it. You know, you know me as a B-I-Z-M-A-Y-K-Y-E. And I go for what I know do on the show. It's like, but it's like, this is all biz style. This is all, like, you know, I just want the stutter step. I want the zooka 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 zooka. And that's what he's giving me. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So I, just like that, that was, yeah. Just that's you. all. Just mumbling shit. Just the cadence. No real words. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. just okay. zooka 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 And that's what he's telling me. Right. And now he's like, yeah. And he's like, and then. You know, I'm um, have Swan sing the Nobody Beats the Wiz, but say Nobody Beats the Biz. You know, and it was like, you know, like that. Like that one I think was the most amazing. And, uh, and then Picking Boogers. Mm. You know, like stuff where I know that I would never ever do for myself. Yeah. Right. He taking me out of my comfort zone, you know, to, you know put yeah. something together for him. That I know I would never write right. no song called Picking Boogers. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Yeah. So you you pinning all this dope ass shit. Like, what was your proudest moment as a writer? Like, some shit you helped create. Um, I think my proudest moment may have came uh, after having a nice day with um Shante, cause um, you know, me and KRS was boys. You know, we was tight, yeah. and um, you know, they wanted something on there, taking shots at them. And you know, I wrote the song for Shante. And then I talked to Chris and I'm like, yo, just just to let you know. You know, I wrote this joint for Shante. And um, you know, I took some jabs at you and Scott. And I he don't like, you know, gonna tell you, but hey man. Yeah. <laughs> but no. I just wrote some cold ass shit. <laughs> I want you here first. <laughs> but soon as he no, I didn't play it for him. I didn't play it for him. I just gave him the heads up. But when he heard it. You know, he reached out and was laughing. He like, yo, man, you know the KRS, that's, that was my graph name, but I'm sitting here listening to this Shante song. I'm like, damn, it does sound like a whack radio station. And he's, <laughs> he's laughing, you know, he's laughing about the shit, you know? Cause, I mean, that's my dude, you know what I mean? So he was laughing about it. You know, like, that was, I was like, okay, this was KRS approved, okay? So uh, we still cool. That's hard. Yeah. That so, was dope. Man. We got to have us. We so y'all ain't never had no beef about it. Like, and no. you think that just probably because you reached out like that to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, you know, you understand, you know, um, while in the midst of all this here uh, Juice Crew, BDP stuff that's going on with him and Shan, you know, this dude and his wife at the time, Miss Melody, rest in peace, um, they helped me move out of my mother's crib. 
you know, into my first apartment, you know. So, you know, we was, we was tight like that, you feel me? Yeah. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether or not your family gives you gifts during the holidays, you get to define the gift you give yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. Taking care of yourself is the pathway to fulfillment and to high performance in work and in life. And just as important, it's a gift to others. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during tough moments, going fishing, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and to switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com 85South to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash 85South. Hey, what's up? It's man Carlos Miller with football season and basketball season and all these sports going on. This is the best time to play fantasy sports. Like, so why not get on prize picks? Prize picks is the easiest way to play daily fantasy. You know, all the first time users that deposit and use 85 South will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That's crazy. If you don't do this, you crazy. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. It's available in over 30 states. So go head over to Prize Picks right now and tap the link below. Yeah, and tell them 85 South so sent you. Download Prize Picks today and play daily fantasy sports. Make sure you use promo code 85 South when you sign up. It's that simple. They giving away money <laughs> to play with. It's crazy. And stop trying to steal my picks, too. <laughs> it's crazy. What do you steal? Bye, man. Damn. That's some, that's some heavy that hip-hop early hip-hop history. Man, man, in New York, it, was, it wasn't. I, I don't know, man. But it seemed like it wasn't that many of y'all. So y'all had to run in them same circles, man. Like, almost. Like. You know, like the overlap is crazy. Like well, you said, you, you know, battle biz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my man used to tell me about him all the time. A, a Long Island dude that was dating my cousin, all the time. That's all I'm hearing. Oh, you got to hear my man Bismarck. My, I was so sick of him telling me about this dude, man. And one day he just said he crossed the street. You know, yeah. All right, I gotta ask you this because uh, you know I love some old school cars and shit like that, man. Who had some of the coldest cars back in the day? Well, I mean, first I got to go with Eric B. Because, I mean, you know, um, Eric had a Rolls back then in, in 88. Damn. Damn. 88 Rolls? Yeah. yeah, Eric had a Rolls Royce in 88. What Slick River ride in? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Slick Rick had. I know the yeah. But you know Eric B had that goddamn Rolls? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this is a time of, like, you know, um... You know, where you know, you you balling hard in a 300 Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, just Rose three. Rose, that's right. a Mike Tyson type yeah. shit. Yeah, and it was just foreign. You know, for us down south, anything foreign around in the 80s, oh, you doing something now. Nah. <laughs> but yeah. nah, but you got to understand, Cats was copping, um, Cats was copping Benz's, BM's, okay. um, they had Deep Saab's shit, and yeah. Audi's and all that. But this dude pulled up in a Rose in 88. Yeah. Great Poupon shit. Yeah, 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 you did yeah. in a real kind of way. Yeah, I gotta ask you this because you know, people may forget, but you did do the, you did the, uh, the rapper actor transition, mm -hmm. start doing some movies and shit. Mm -hmm. you did yeah. the posse movie? Come on, man. Cult classic, man. What was it like working on that shit? Oh man, it was great. Um, cause it was like I wanted people to take me serious. And not, you know, look on the screen and see Big Daddy Kane. So it's like when uh, Mario is explaining it to me, he's like, you know, you're a gambler from New Orleans that migrated west, and you're all about the money. You don't really care about none of us. But then you get an attachment to um, such and such on Little J, and you start really having respect and love for the posse. So, so he's explaining the role. I'm like, okay. So, you know, I'm learning how to ride a horse. I got thrown about three times, but I, I finally figured it out. And, you know, I'm, you know, riding horses. And then, like, since he said New Orleans, I knew I didn't have to worry about having a Western accent. So I just went to, um, you know, spent like two weeks with my family 
down in um, Bowman, South Carolina. Mm. You know, because you know that's where you hear that. What your name is? <laughs> you know, you know. So I'm down there, you know, just 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 studying the language and trying to get that Southern slang down. And you know, I, um, you know, a lot of people, I think they, you know, they enjoyed the role. You know, and that's what all, I just wanted them to see me other than K. No, that was definitely, you know, a cowboy. You know, you're going from a rapper to a cowboy, that's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a big leap. Well, I mean, with shit. I mean, Mo D, Kumo D did it in Wild West. Why not me, yeah, man? Most definitely. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you was in the first black superhero movie, too, wasn't you? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, Media, Media Man. Robert Townsend. Come on, man. Come yeah. On, man. Man. We'll be trying to give it credit, man. That's the first black superhero movie we had that I can think of. Yeah, I just get nervous talking about stuff like that. Well, people like him because I had that blonde hair. So I, don't really, I don't know where this conversation. Go to Lord. We rock you know with it. Hey, we was a band. Yeah. We rock with it. I don't know where this conversation. We talking about that shit a couple weeks ago. <laughs> nah, that, Lord. that was one of them ones, though, man. It was a yeah. hell. Appreciate you. Bro. Appreciate you. Hell of a career, man. Hell yeah. of a career. So, do you like? Like he asked earlier, are you are you into any of the new school hip hop or? Or shit like that. Are you still involved with the music at all? You still, still you know, get the urge to write a dope rhyme from time to time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, from time to time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, I've, with music, I love to see it evolve. You know? Um, I feel like um, after my heyday, what happened with Nas, Biggie, uh, Jay-Z, you know, it's beautiful. What happened? They with, always show you a lot of love, too. Yeah, no, yeah, that's beautiful. What happened with Jada Kiss, uh, Eminem, Ludacris, um, T.I., you know, I felt like, you know, you know, beautiful, you know, so I, I love watching it evolve. Um, now it's, it, it has a different dynamic to it, but you still have um, those lyrical cats like um, J. Cole, Kendrick, um, Conway, Benny the Butcher, yeah. you know. And now you got the new ones, um, like um, there's some amazing sisters out there, um, Lady London, um, Saba the Goddess. Um, yeah. Ah man, I can't think of this other young lady name, but she, yeah, she's a she's a she's a beast too. I mean, and, um, Kaya Baby. This 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 it's just you know. So I'm I'm always watching to see how it evolves. You know, it's just that I have to search harder now. Yeah. yeah. You know, because it's not you know um, uh, getting. The, the real lyricists don't get mainstream radio play. Yeah, right, so right. I have to search for But I don't have a problem with it, because that's how it was, you know, when we came out. A lot of us wasn't getting radio play. So you had to search, you know, you, you, you'd you hear uh, uh, LL record, a Big Daddy Kane record, you know, but you had to search to find a King's son. Um, you had to, you know, search to find, you know, so, you know certain lyrical yeah. MCs. There's a certain yeah. point when you heard raps and you were like, this shit ain't hit, what they doing with it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, at, at the same time, I'm saying this ain't it. I understand, like you know, um, when Rapper's Delight dropped, how a lot of people felt about rap. Period. You know, coming from you know, um, all they hear is R and B. So they're like, y'all ain't doing nothing but talking. That ain't even y'all record. Y'all stole that from Sheik. That's good times, you know. So and this so, shit been happening from the beginning. Yeah. No, it's yeah, it's like yeah. you know, you hear something new and something different. Hate on you, yeah, you know. So it's like when I hear something, it's like you know, I just I just simply say, you know, well, shit, I'm 55, man. You, this ain't for me, you know. This for the young cats. Let them enjoy it. That's their thing. But you, you can know. tell that you know the music back in the day had so much substance that. The music that only really go crazy today is the ones that they redo. They have to remake music. Like, they still remaking music to this day. Well, I mean, you know, hip-hop kind of founded on that almost a little bit with the sample shit. Yeah, for a little sure. Bit, you think? Well, you know, you, 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 you run out of fresh ideas. Right. You start remaking stuff. But I will say this, to add on to what you said. Um, my MC hero, Grandmaster Kaz, is a statement he made a few years ago, and now I hear a whole lot of people saying it. He said that hip hop didn't invent anything; it reinvented everything. That's all. That's a real. You know, <clears throat> so. That's real. I wanted to ask you this, right? When did? Cause you were rapping in the early stages of you know development of rap. When did it go from for you? When did it go from like the you know like the boom bap style of the late 70s, early 80s, into, you know, the Big Daddy Kane where you flipping words and rapping fast as shit and, 
You know what I mean? Stretching the syllables and all you that. You made but, this the year before. Like, I don't know, bro. Your shit was effortless. And it just sounded like. And you just run through that shit and just go back to shit, the. You know like, what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, um, I think that, like I was saying, in 77, when Melly Mel made it lyrical, that's when now all these MCs got to step their game up. You know? The stuff that, um, you know, DJ Hollywood, Love Bug, Starsky, and them cats was doing. No, you got to be lyrical now. Right. It's not just about party and stuff and call and response. Right. You have to be lyrical. And that's when, you know, you, you saw, the, like, the Grandmaster Kaz, uh, Kumo D. Um, there was another brother by the name of DLB, Tito, from the Fearless Four. Um, you started seeing MCs becoming more lyrical, you know. But by the <clears> time uh, Run DMC came out a few years later, um, I think the stuff started, you know, going more into a party phase, you know? And um, then you had like, uh, I think like uh, uh, Roxanne Chante's, uh, Roxanne Chante, um, 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 Salt and Pepper. So it's, 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 uh, oh, Dougie Fresh in the show. Most that, I think that the, the show might have been the one that really, really took it to that party. You know, like, this is what we looking for, some party stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the show, that was like a party jam, you know? But then, um, then uh, 86, I believe, that's when I think that's when Rock Kim came out. Okay. And then KRS, and then right after that was me. And all three of us, you know, like, yeah. was just, li oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rock Kim, KRS, Cool G Rap, oh, and then me. Okay, yeah, y'all, yeah, yeah. 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 So y'all like the Mount Rushmore of the, of the, of the style switch. Of that, of that era, yeah, yeah, I could go with that. Yeah. I wouldn't argue that. Yeah. I could go with that. Cool. That's four, right? Yeah, yeah. The hell of a movie. Yeah, 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 that's hard. That's real. Had a hell of a movie. Yeah, shit, I gotta get me a statue built now. That that's shit hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, hey, you know we be having so many artists and stuff. Somebody, yeah. come on. Well, I mean, every era has their uh, uh, amount. Much. Matter of fact, I'm curious. Like, for, 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 for you, who would be your, your Mount Rushmore? That's a good one. Like, my top, like, just four. all around? No. T today? From, from your generation. From my generation? From the, uh, I gotta say Tupac. Nah. Uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony as a whole. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of hair. No, no, we put some more hair, bro. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. One more. Uh, Tim C. Tim C. Okay, yeah, see? You know, that's that's the beautiful thing about hip hop, man. It's like you can get into this and uh, gravitate to certain artists for so many different reasons. Yeah, most definitely. You know, for so many different reasons. I just miss back when it was, when you knew, when you heard somebody like you knew where they were from. I miss that. Like we knew y'all was from up top. We knew they was from over here. Like you know, it ain't like that no more. All of it just sound just one one sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. That's why I like, like West Side Gun, like Griselda, like you were talking yeah. about. Like they got that old New York feel that, you know what I'm saying? I like that. Yeah. And they Buffalo, right? I want to hear that yeah. culture over there. Yeah. That New York shit, like I like that. Yeah, I music to always, listen. people in the South always listening to your music, always listening to new fuck with Big Daddy Kane, man. When you were touring and shit, did you come to the South like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to love, um, doing shows, you know, um, in Atlanta, Mobile. Mobile. Um, yeah, you did a freak I, Huh? You didn't do a freak Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. He did his own freak <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was at you know that shit You know I'm about yeah. to ask you about the Madonna shit? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm about to ask you that. I, I want to know from you. I got to hear from you. This is one of my childhood dreams come, come to life. What happened? Who did you want to ask? Take her on the top. <laughs> yeah, where you mean at? I mean, how did this happen? <laughs> Who was all over there? <laughs> nah, um, Warner Brothers has sent us on a promotional tour. It was myself, Madonna, and Color Me Bad. And, you know, we was visiting a lot of uh, uh, upper class white hospitals, you know. And, you know, the kids that was in there, we, the kids in, in intensive care, whatever, you know, they, did, they didn't really know who I was. You know, they knew who Madonna was, called me bad, but they didn't know her. And, like, Madonna was like, and this is Big Daddy Kane. You know, he's, he's a famous rapper. Let me, let, me, come on. let me hear you say, ain't, no. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, wow, Madonna know my shit. Wow, that's crazy. 
And then afterwards, she said that she was doing a book. She was like, well, I'm working on this book. I would, you know, like you'd be in it. I would be, I would be on it. And she was like, well, you know, it's gonna be nude photos. And I was like, well, shit, even better. And <laughs> we, we, you know, we did it. And, you know, I f flew down to Miami and we took a bunch of po photos, me, her, and um, Naomi Campbell. And, you know. Yeah, we were chilling, yeah. having sandwiches, <laughs> taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, it was all it was just it was just a photo shoot though, that's all. Yeah, it's, there's nothing really extra to tell, man. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. What's some of the tour, man? Like what you remember from just touring, like when you first set out there, when you kinda knew you was you was up. Cause touring before you know you got it locked in. It's different than hitting that road once you know, okay, now I'm here to stay. Like, um, It's fun. You know, I mean, the tour bus life, especially, you know, you're young and whatnot, the tour bus life is a lot of fun. Yeah. And then just the energy. Because it's like, you know, I'm an artist, you're an artist, you're an artist, you're an artist. You know, we gravitate, you know, we probably shooting dice, getting drunk every yeah. night, right? <laughs> right? But, you know, when it's time to hit that stage, though, Shit. Yeah. What yeah, you gonna I, do? <laughs> you know, we ain't cool right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I got the hand. Like huh? It was competitive like that? Man, listen, let me tell you something. Eric B could be at my house Thursday night, and we'll be sitting there in the back room looking at our parents. My father and Eric B father. These dirty ass old men, they out there on the couch when my pops is looking up the stairs, making sure my mom's ain't coming down, telling Eric Pops, go ahead. He ordering Uncle Luke videos on video jukebox <laughs> so they can see some booty shake videos and shit. There. Yeah. And me and Eric sitting there laughing at them, crying, laughing at these dudes, right? Friday night come. We got a show somewhere in Providence, Rhode Island, wherever. Eric a smooth walk past my ass like he don't see me. Now, we just was together last night because we in that zone. We in, it's showtime. I got to have it. Eric can smooth walk past me like he don't see me with his head up, you know? <laughs> that's but, that's, but that's that real hip-hop shit, though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, this is a clip of you rapping on stage and the fucking mic go out. Then that shit pop back on and you just keep rapping. That shit and the crowd went crazy. Oh, uh, well, you know, that's something that, honestly, that's something we used to do every night. But that's, you know, before internet. So nobody knew. It was like a surprise to everybody in every state right. that we went to. But then, you know, once I seen the shit pop up on YouTube, I was like, well, we got to retire that. Damn. You know what I mean? ain't got to retire. People still be wanting to see that shit, because that shit. So you playing, you, you had been doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was like no one knew because, you know, there wasn't, oh, you know, yeah. you know, wasn't no social media, wasn't no, you know, nobody was really on the internet like that, you know? That's hard. That's hard, man. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. Yeah. None other than Big Daddy Kane. This is just, this is beyond me right now, J.O.N. This is crazy. This is unbelievable, man. You got to give me one of your favorite Biz Marquis stories. I just watched you on the documentary. He had a great life. He's a great dude full of energy and love and, and light, man. So you got to give me one of your favorite Biz stories. Uh, uh, I just told one, like, like, there's so many, but, um, I think probably my favorite one was one night we did a show, um, I don't know if it was Latin Quarter, some spot in New York, anyway, though, uh, we did a show and we got some girls in the limo, this is Beeper Days, Sky Pages, that's, Something. Oh, it's you know something what a beeper weird. is? I know a lot of beeper. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Right. Yeah. okay. I'm just trying to keep you with us, player. Uh, 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 um, <laughs> nah, um, his beeper went off. off. He looks at his beeper and he's like, Luther. And the girls, and I'm looking at this dude like, man, don't do this, man. But the girls, they over there like, Biz, you know Luther Vandross? Yeah, man, he want me to beatbox for him at the garden, but I don't feel like it. I told him, I just let him hold one of my dookie ropes. And I'm just sitting <laughs> there. They believe this shit, He put it all like a motherfucker. Yo, they believe this shit. 
Like, <laughs> fell for it. Yeah. You wouldn't, none of y'all wouldn't believe nothing like that if he would have said that in front of you, right? <laughs> right, yeah. But you. No, man, come on, man. <laughs> I'm not believing it, man. No, I'm not believing it, but I'm saying back there, I can see some girls going for it. Though. Yeah, they, they, they was excited. They was excited. I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> he probably done went and beeped his damn self and came yeah. back. Hey, no, no, no. Someone beeped him, but it wasn't a goddamn Luther Vandals. You know? <laughs> but, you know, I'm used to biz tall tales, you know what I'm saying? But I'm. this is one of the nights where I'm like, yo, you telling one we'll, we ain't gonna get no ass at the end of the night. With, with, you know, trying to convince them that we know Luther Vandross, man. You know? He went too big. Yeah, yeah. Every time yeah. the big went up, oh, him again. Come on. Oh, yeah. Damn, Luther. But that might have been, because, look, back then you couldn't Google you nothing. You would live. Yeah, you couldn't Could Google it. Prove that you How you live? really gonna look it up? You know what I'm saying? Like, man. Hey, okay, listen. See, right now, you're used to seeing, uh, Rihanna standing next to Jay-Z and stuff like that. No, no. Not in my era, man. You see it? Oh, you said it was like Hell fucking no, man. Nah, they, me and Luther wouldn't be in the same... Me and, Luther, <laughs> me and Luther wasn't in the same room until I made a song with Patti LaBelle, man. Damn, yeah. right. We had to connect right. with Patti. Right. You know Mostly what I'm saying? I was working for Patty. No. Yes. <laughs> yep. No. You dead ass serious though. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We both was Patty's plus plus one. Yeah. Me and Ruth though. Yeah. She's a nice lady. Ah, uh, she's amazing, man. She's yeah, amazing. Have, have, you had, circle, though, ain't have you ever had a patty pie? Nah, I don't. I don't. I don't eat sweets. But um, she did the, the day I laid my vocals. She cooked some vegetarian collard greens, mac and cheese, and some fried fish for me. I brought it to the studio. Yeah. I heard that legendary Patty the Bell meal is supposed to Oh, she's to be a beast in the kitchen. It's heavenly. Yeah, she's yeah. a beast in the kitchen. Yeah. And like when we was on tour together, like I've seen her do stuff where like, you know, she'd get up in first class and, and, and go in there fucking with the flight attendants. You're like, no, I I'm, I'm need to put a little hot sauce, pull a hot sauce out of her purse. And, yeah, 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 yeah. That was back when you could smoke a cigarette on the plane. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You might owe me that one. You might. I done, I done took two cheap jabs, so you might owe me that one. You might owe me that one. <laughs> That's crazy, man. It's these legendary pictures that come up on Throwback Thursday of you getting a haircut, man. Your, your shit was always tight. Who, who was your barber back in the day? Um, first, it was my man Smooth. And then, um, like once we started, he brought from out of White Cough Projects. Um, we went to high school together for a brief moment, but, uh, you know, my dude smooth. And then, like, um, once we started going on the road, um, school, my dancer, he was nice with the Clippers, too, so it ended up, ended up being him. That's what's up. Yeah. Wyckoff, that, that's, that's Queens? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, okay. That's yeah. crazy. Oh. Did you knew Biggie person? No, I mean, um, I met Biggie, and, um, uh, the brother that was my... They used used to be my DJ and the dis discovered Biggie DJ Mr C. He had um he put us on the phone like twice like we talked on the phone twice. But I mean I didn't like we didn't really have a relationship. His relationship was with Mr C. Yeah. But a phenomenal MC man, yeah phenomenal. Speaking MC. of Biggie, did you ever think that hip hop would take it this far? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I mean it's like. Just watching the way people was bashing it, you know, in the beginning, it, it was like the remnants of um, rock and roll. It's the same thing they said about rock and roll in the 50s, and you saw what happened with that. So it was like I kind of saw it the, the same way, you know? Like, okay, something new and revolutionary is coming through that an older generation don't understand. It's going to stick. And it's going to be like powerful. Rap is the only genre that changes. I don't feel like no other genre changes. When you say changes, what do you it mean? Change like the agenda they push in the day. Like you really you won't be nobody if you're not talking about killing a nigga or some stupid shit like that. Like it's 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 to the point when you got eight year old kids rapping talking about killing. Like clearly that's, that's a well. I mean, you know, um, uh, with rock and roll, you know. Um, with Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Elvis Presley and them, it's, you know, it started on some some party stuff. And then, um, you know, it, it went into, um, like, um, psychedelic phase, you know, 
talking about a lot of drugs and stuff. And then it went into anti-war. And then it went into heavy metal. So, I mean, rock and roll did a whole lot of changes, too, you know, you know. And that psychedelic phase was about a lot of drugs, you know. Yeah, that was rap the other day. Yeah. They just went through it. They still, they going they still through going through opioid phase now. I don't know. This shit crazy. If Future talk about smoking crack. I don't know if we're ever going to have a rapper that can successfully pull off that one. Smoke crack. Smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have them. Future can do it. We didn't have them. That just was openly smoking crack. Not openly. I'm going to shit I'm this one out. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, that ain't going to happen. I hope not anyway. Let, them sh- let that shit go. Drug right. rap, though. But you know, they got a lot of different genres of rap right now. With You know, they got pussy rap now. Did you ever think that you would see a whole genre of pussy rap? Yeah, it's, it's nah. Cool. <laughs> you know, I mean. That ain't for my ear. I think there's a time and a place for everything, you know. Um, like, before hip hop. You know, it like we had parents that would um, sit in front of us, clean the house, playing Osley Brothers, the OJs, and then when we go to bed, they throw on Millie Jackson. She's singing but cursing her ass off. Mm. You know, most definitely. And, and then when we not there, they might throw some Dolomite on. You know, Dolomite made music. Party records. Like Dolomite, you talking about Dolomite? Yeah. Can no, 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 that's why he's here. No, 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 that's why he's here. It's, he it's needs co- to be it's, here. It's Compare it's angle and no trade. I can't see you. He made what? <laughs> Dolomite. You talking about Dolomite? Well, put a candle on my ass and call me a birthday cake. I be damned. I just be damned. Nah, yeah, he made all he made party records, but yeah, he he did try to sing too. But I mean, he mainly Damn. party records, but um. But I mean, you know, it, it was like all this stuff exists, you know, uh, you know, I just think that the difference is, like I said, that's what our parents played when we was in, at, went to bed or when we wasn't home, you know. Um, so it's I, the parents got to have some discretion. Whoa, well, radio too. Mm. Yeah. Radio too. Radio got they got a job to do. They got to play what they t- somebody telling them what they do. What they do. I don't think they get well, to pick the music anymore. No well, I mean, I'm not talking about the the on air job. Mm. I'm talking about you know whoever's Program running the radio station. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, um, you know, yeah. Because I mean, shit, shit, that's how it was with us. You had to. You, we had to make. Like no, we had to make a clean version. Yeah. You, if you had some gangster stuff or some sexual stuff, you had to um, make a clean version where you're not cursing. You know what I'm saying? You're shooting a video. You got a picture of weed or guns on your shirt. Now nah, you got to take that shit yeah, off. get that out of there. Like my Smooth Operator video, um, you see Chris Rock in there. You see I'll Be Sure in there. But they completely cut Kadeem Hardison out because I was on Warner Brothers and he had on a t-shirt that said Batman sucks. And that was a Warner Brothers movie. Damn. Yeah. Why he ain't like Batman? No. Oh, you got to ask for Dan. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> you did that to himself. Yeah, and we're talking about the Michael Keaton Batman. Yeah, Batman. The, okay. not, not the new one. Not the Bruce Wayne. It's still Bruce. No, it's still Bruce Wayne, okay. but not, not, not with the... <laughs> Um, whoever, whoever is Christian Bale, whoever's playing him now. There, there, was, there was a guy named Michael Keaton. Okay, that's Luther Rigno, ain't That's how you know he's lying about his age. He's lying about his age. He, know he knows some old <laughs> shit. Man, you had oh, some, man. You had some of the... You know some old shit. <laughs> he knows some old shit. Now, you had some of the coldest jewelry, too, man. Where used to get your jewelry and shit from? Um, first of Did you keep any of that shit? Nah, nah. Was it a competition with the jury? Most definitely. Probably. But y'all had that shit on, though. Like, yeah. I felt like, yeah, like. But see, I got to a point where it, it was irritating me, you know? Because, like, like, you know, with the dancing, dancing stuff. shit is flat, big ass I come off stage, I got all types of nicks and scratches oh, from where it done bust me in my face yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I didn't, you know. Yeah, it got to a point where it was like, yeah. Take some of this shit out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who had the coldest jury game where you were like, hey, Slick Rick. Yeah, Slick Rick. Rick. Yeah, of course. Slick. Hands down. Slick Rick, yeah. Buster after him, Buster Rhymes. 
Buster should be chomped up. I said yeah. his necklace was dumb. Yeah, Buster be having a Buster or um, Ghostface. Yeah, they be yeah, they, they Ghostface be Ghostface with the uh, Wonder Woman cuff with the eagle yeah, on it. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that nigga moved around with that, but it stayed. That stayed <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. See, I, once it started getting uncomfortable, I wasn't really thinking about it no more. You know, it was like I can't move around and function in this shit, man. How many times you say you got busted the every face night? <laughs> every I'm night saying, I have a stuck new it scratch out. on you. You stuck it yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> that shit just iconic though, man. Cold shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. You were close to slick too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in his first video, Teenage Love. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Slick Rick, um, very unique rapper with an amazing voice. You know. I mean, yeah, he, I guess he was um hip hop version of of the Beatles. You know that 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 that, that European yeah, yeah voice that just took America by storm. You know cuz I mean, back then there was a whole lot of rappers mm -hmm. that tried to use that European accent to come out with records. You know. After Slick Rick. After Slick Rick. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, stop. We got to find this shit. Yeah, yeah. All the field rappers who didn't do it with the accent. Polly Dolly. <laughs> Polly Wally. Polly Wally. Oh. Yeah. Because I was going to say y'all like. Hey, my, my name's Slick Richard, yeah? <laughs> Slippery Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, Rick, 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 Rick took the world by storm, man. I mean, I mean, it was like he was already a dope MC, but that voice though, just you know, took it to a whole nother level, man. Yeah, cause you like it's almost like y'all at the opposite end. You got the deep, smooth shit. My voice was much the, higher then. My voice, like um, I think when I turned twenty, my voice changed. That's when it dropped. Yeah, yeah. But Slick Rick was always a little high red, like you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you know he had a different vocabulary. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. He got a British son. He was just talking about. He that. does. He, he got son. a British son, man. What your son said? Will you? Toilet, daddy, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, his 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 British slang was different than American slang. You know, um, where we might say, you know, trash. Uh, Rick call you crumbs, you know? He does uh, so we, crumbs uh, at yeah. the end of the song. That's what yeah. he was saying, bro. We say we're going to destroy, you know, whatever. And he would say, I'm going to conquer you. You know, he, okay. and so it was like, he was just so unique. His shit was like just so unique and different, man. Yeah. King yeah. Asiatic, nobody's equal. Yes, sir. Mm. How did you come up with that? Um, five percent, you know, dealing with the five percent nation. You right. know, that was the attribute I chose, you know. Well, I mean, really, it was just King Asiatic. But in the rhyme, I said, nobody's equal. And then from that point, everybody just kept saying it. So, <clears throat> yeah, I just, you know, just, but it's really just King Asiatic. But then, you know, when I broke down Kane, I said, King Asiatic, nobody's equal. You broke it down like that, or it just came out like that? <laughs> I broke it down like that. Okay. Name Kane is superior t to many people. Oh, yeah, it means okay. King Asiatic, nobody's equal. Yeah. What was it like recording that symphony? Symphony, man, amazing, amazing. Cause um, I um, I recorded Roar, and the night I recorded Roar, me and G Rap just did a freestyle off of it, and Marley started playing it on the air, and people started requesting it. So Marley said, "Yo, I want y'all to do this again, but on my album." So it was like, "Okay, cool." So me and G Rap was gonna do a song on Marley album. Uh. Down the line, Marley is like, yo, I told Craig that um, y'all gonna do something. And Craig said he wanna be on it too. And Craig had just came out with this song called Duck Alert. And I heard, you know, how, you know, how he had elevated with his lyrical skills and everything. He was sounding so different and, you know, killing it. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I love how Craig's sounding right now. That's cool. And then we took the pictures for the album cover and we went back to Marley's house and was like, let's do the song. And then Marley says, well, um, this is my new artist, Master Ace, you know, and I'm, I'm going to put him on the song, too. And like Ace, um, 
Ace had these big ass Woody Allen glasses on, right? <laughs> and I was went to the corner and I went to G Rap and I'm like, yo, I ain't fucking with glasses, man. I'm out. Uh, <laughs> I'ma say I'm gonna get some pizza and then I'm bouncing. And G Rap, motherfucker, you ain't leaving me. I'm out too. So we were talking to them, they started talking about um uh, who gonna go first and who gonna go last. And they started that conversation. And we we like, we getting up out of here. And then Ace just says, you know, that he's, he'll go or whatever, you know. And Ace went, and we heard him, and I'll back over to g -Bap. I'm like, yo, class is nice as fuck, man. You know, I like, man, man. Yo, I like this dude, you know? you know. Yeah. And he like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we stayed, and we made the song happen. The rest was history. Yeah. That shit literally yeah. is history, though. Oh, he had to go in there, but he probably felt it too. Like, let me just go in here <laughs> and rip this shit so these niggas believe in me. Now, Ace bodied that yeah. shit, man. Ace, let me tell you something about Ace. Ace mindset, way of thinking, his vision. I wish he would have got down with the Juice Crew back in 86 when I first started running one. I wish Ace would have got down then. I think that if Ace would have got down then, the Juice Crew would have probably lasted another 10 years. Because his mindset wasn't on just Ace being a celebrity. His mindset was on Juice Crew as a whole. Mm. Mm. He was thinking, you know, like, you know, what we could do together, who could pair up with, like his, yeah, his mindset was somewhere else. Right. Like, you know, he was thinking like a record company executive, you yeah. know, yeah. Man, what was your first response when you saw young ass Roxanne Shantae rocking the mic like that? It's like, I'm hearing these songs. Right. And then Biz tells me he's going to power play um, to record a song with Shantae. I'm like, shit, I want to come, I want to see. And we get there, and he's beatboxing, and she's, you know, I'm Shantae in the rap, rap so she's rhyming. And Fly Tide to do the owner label, he stopped her about something. Told her she didn't do this or something, I don't know what it was, to it again. So she goes again. I'm like, okay, am I tripping or that's something different? They stop her again, told her, go again. And now I'm like, nah, I ain't tripping. These ain't the same rhymes. I'm like, every take she's saying something different. So I lean over the biz. I'm like, yo, she not going to say the, um, the shit she was saying at first. Like, Shantae don't write no rhymes. All that shit's off the head. I'm like, everything? He's like, everything. I'm like, what about the other fucking records? Like Roxanne's Revenge and, you know, all? he's like, everything. I'm sitting there blown away now, like, oh, shit. So she's just going in the studio, just off the dome, just, you know, nothing is written. He's like, nah. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I was blown away. Like, you know, like, yo, all these songs that we've been listening to all this time, she's just going in. Freestyle. Yeah. Man. So rapper been not writing. <clears throat> But that was, I said rappers been not writing, but like she really freestyling that shit. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know about other cats, you know. Um, but I mean, her, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Matter That's, of fact, the, the "Have a Nice Day" <clears throat> joint uh, that I wrote for her is her first written song. All the other hits was her just off the dome. And so they rapping that bit. She just rapped that shit start to finish. Start to finish, Damn. and if she, if she fuck up, she will just start with a whole new round. No, whole, yes. well, but just as cold. They ain't had a punch in game back then. No punch. I know they could. They couldn't. Well, right? I mean, it's like punch in for what? She don't remember what the fuck she just said a minute ago. Right. So she just go again from the time. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Shantae. That's hard. Yeah. Shantae a beast. That's man. hard. Shantae is a beast. I ain't heard that before. That's real. That's yeah. crazy. Let me tell you something I've seen about Shantae. This girl, I don't know, 15, 16, something like that, walking into a room and you see grown ass men. Don't want no smoke with her. Like grown ass men just get up, walk out, because you never know what she gonna do. Right. You know, if she pop off and decide that, no, we gonna battle right now, 
I <laughs> run his shit. You know? That's crazy. Yeah. Have you ever had a battle that you were like, fuck me up? Did, they, huh? did you ever have a battle where you were like, yeah, he fucked me up? Like, nah. Fuck me up. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. Man, you've been in all over the world. I saw a clip of you performing in Russia. How you doing over there, man? The Stinking. Russian. The Russian, <laughs> the Russian <laughs> fucked with you the long way over there, man. No, nah, I was over there stinking because <laughs> we got there uh, two days late. We got there the actual day of the show, Damn. and I had def- been on different flights from America to London, from London to Moscow, Moscow to Petersburg. So we just getting there and got to go straight to the venue and perform. So <laughs> two days straight. Same drawers, kept it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what what's I was. Your, what's doing. your favorite spot internationally? Though? Um, internationally, either London or Amsterdam. Okay. Like the energy is so crazy over there. Then also, they 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 so they so deep into the history. Like all the all all the all the all the B sides, the out al- you know album cuts, yeah. they know all, they want to hear all that shit, yeah. not just the, hits. the whole album. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they want to hear all, and they gonna sing it with you. Yeah, wow. yeah, and they study like everything on the back of that album cover, whatever little hip hop facts, whatever they know that like homework, man, and they got questions. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They all this would be the perfect time to bring my boy up in here. They all now I was they. watching the documentary the other night um, about Biz. He was a hell of a collector. So mm-hmm. I feel like I got to introduce you to my partner that's a hell of a collector, the hip hop historian, none other than New Face. He got all the shit. New Face. Right. And I know he got some yeah, big daddy can't yeah, question. Yeah. What's up, baby? Yeah. What's up, baby? Yeah. What's up, baby? What yeah. you what you bring tonight, Larry? And, and recently this year, man, I've probably seen Kane about four times this year. I just seen he you on the Rock the Bells Bell. boat. We just on that Rock the Bells boat, man. You killed it, gave <coughs> those people on that boat a phenomenal show. And you was like, your leg hurt, but I'm going to give you oh, my... yeah, my leg was killing <laughs> Man, with the crazy dude <laughs> ran on stage. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, you talking about, um, at, um, was it London? London. Yeah. 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 Well, that, so what we got here is, you know, he talks about this gentleman right here. That's Kane right there. I would love for you to autograph this, but you know, absolutely, absolutely. inside there we got the album there as well. Yeah. You talking about here or on the inside? No, I mean, on, on the front yes, label or the back? Yes, okay. We also have, you know. Now look at that. Top notch fine lady. Hey, you got your car. Oh, the MTV joints, yeah. This brother's tape right there. Two of these right there, because you wrote songs on them. <laughs> he brought it. Yeah, I, mean, I knew you had that shit. Yeah, you talk about the infamous, my, one of my favorite haircuts, the photo. You got it. Talking about this one right there. That's it right there. We got it signed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the infamous album covers from it. So. And you talk about the juice crew, so. Yeah, that's the day that's the day we recorded the symphony. Word. Uh, yeah, we took the pictures for Molly's album cover and then left and went to his crib. And when they say glasses is cold, he's talking about the dude. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 show him the glasses. The glasses are big as hell. Ace, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> big ass Bobby won't make. <laughs> they got them big ass Bobby won't make glasses on. And we got another. It shows. Album covers as well, and cassette form. Your dance is on the side as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Him sleeping yeah. the bird. Man, what made you go with the four finger gold rings? That's some. That's some hard shit. Oh, you know, you know, you know the old brass knuckles look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you're actually featured in this book. Um, you familiar with LL Cool J's The Streets Win? I heard about it. I, I, I haven't seen the. Uh, remember, I have a copy. <coughs> They have this photo of him. Wow. Big Daddy Kane as well. Wow. And the Jeanette Beckman joint. 
favorite uh, album cover, this brother right here. On Rolling Stones, top 50 hip hop songs of all time, they, they registered this as number 25. Hey. What's the story behind that one? Behind that? Ain't no half step. Um, interesting. Um, I went to Cool V house, that's Biz DJ. And Biz had a bag of 45s on the floor. So we looking through them. And I found that Blind Alley beat from the emotions. I'm like, you know, yo V. And he like, yo, you know, that's Biz shit, man. I'm like, come on, let's just vibe on it. <laughs> so he um, looped it up. Like the, the mixer that used to could loop. I mean, could sample. Yeah. He looped it up and I'm rhyming. I'm like, yeah, I gotta touch this. And I'm writing to it. And then Biz calls the house, screaming, losing his mind. I found it. I found it. I finally found it. I'm telling you, we going platinum now. We going. I'm with you. I found it. I found the record I was looking for. And I'm like, the um, the um. He's like, yes, man. He's like, I'm telling you, I'm going platinum. I was like, so then, that means you probably don't even really care about this blind alley record for me. You can have that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> like my man. And he gave me, Biz gave me the beat for Ain't No Half Stepping. And the beat that he had been looking for for about almost two years that he finally found was the, you got what I need. Just a friend. Yeah. That was yeah. a smash. He knew it. Yeah. He now he had been saying that, no. listen, he had been saying that he, when, when he find this, I guarantee I'm going platinum. So wait a minute, he was really looking for the physical record. The Freddie Scott. You got what I need. So he knew the song from like yeah. radio and I shit. I think he said he saw it at Bam by the house or something. I can't remember who he said, but he had been looking for it, but couldn't, didn't know the name. Mm -hmm. So when he came back to the house and he's playing it, I'm like, because I remember him going to record stores. Look, he was like, yo, it's this song. It, it got, and the melody is like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, yo, this. <laughs> You would be sitting there singing, you know, and then Kofi just start laughing. It's like, you know, his dumb ass forgot how it go. <laughs> so for years he was singing it wrong. That's why he couldn't find it. Damn. You know. So how did he eventually find it? I don't know. I don't know. Cause I mean, he, me and V was together. He was by himself. So I don't know how That's he found crazy. it. Crazy. Yeah. He stumbled upon that. We yeah. take shit for granted, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, he said when he find it, he going platinum, and well, I'd be damn if he did. Like you said, he gave you this record. What was the process in, in getting the record, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, generally, or did um, you just be at the crib and be like, bro, I'm fucking with that. I can have that. Well, back then, at that point in time, period, you know, take it to Marley crib, um, tell him what part, you know, loop this part up here, boom, 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 you know. And I put this on, and then we, you know, go in the booth and lay the vocals. That's crazy. And most recently, um, Nas um, honored uh, Scarface and Rakim, um, awarded them, funded them $250,000, uh, honored them. Um, were you aware of that? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was style. beautiful. So if they ask Kane next year, we want to do that same thing with four MCs, who would you pick personally? If they ask you, who would you pick for next year's honorees to be? Melly Mel, Grandmaster Kaz, um, Kumo D and uh, DJ Hollywood. I want to ask this for my own personal record. I call New Face all the time and we talk hip hop, man. Give me, give me five old school hip hop songs to listen to. Little known, your favorites, whatever the fuck. Just give me five. Like um, Cool G Rap Poison. Okay. Keep this list, new face. Yeah, cool you rap poison. Um Divine Force Holy War. Okay. That's where Ghost got that party, party, get that body. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um Yeah, Divine Force Holy War. Um, um Chub Rock caught up. Okay. Um Doug Berg used to go crazy. Just yeah. the two of us. That was my shit. Yeah. yeah. Nah, that caught up though. Like I like. So the tape pop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know how many cassette tapes I popped listening to Caught Up. Word. His voice, too. He was another with a dark voice. Like, I love, like, your voice. Guru had another voice. Jada Kiss Freeway. Like, those are, like, the best of that had a distinct voice. Like, that always helped the record. Yeah. MC Light, 10% Diss. Okay. Yeah, MC Light, 10% Diss. And, oh. Um, Grandmaster Kaz, Get Down Grandmaster. Okay. When he did a solo song. Yeah. You got to. about all that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say some shit I ain't heard yet. Right. <laughs> no, that's a good list, man. I'm going to check them out. Yeah. And Most man, definitely. Your verse, man. On, I mean, I've seen somebody after Rock the Bell's um, boat bring it up, man, with Big L. You know, how was it? How did that come about? And maybe you can just let them know. You know, speak that verse, but how did that come about reaching out or you know that being a part of that song with Big L? Um I was at my lawyer's office and he was on the phone um with um Primo's lawyer and um another gentleman by the name of Mike Haran, he just informed me that he was the, on that call as well. But um, they was working out um, legal matters with somebody else that was on the Big L album, and then my lawyer was like, y'all need to have Kane on there. And then like, well, at least one of them said to Primo, yo, Theo said, you know, y'all need to have Kane on there. And Premier was like, yo, where Kane at? He's, like, He's here. Yo, tell him to come to D&D now. And I just, you know, went over there and we did it. Wow. Yeah. What's your process, man, putting, this, putting these rhymes together? It differs. How do you get in that mode? I mean, it differs. You know, sometimes, you know, you hear a track and it's like, okay, I can ride this like that, you know, okay. Sometimes, you know, it might be some, sh some shit that I wrote just in the crib, just chilling, and I hear a beat and it's like, you know, that what you call it, rhyme could work on here. You know, that what you call it, yeah. You know, so it differs. You know, sometimes I would write to the track and sometimes I have stuff and then you know, I'll be like, Nah, too slow. Then you hear something else. Oh, you had to work on this. Come on. The one with Conway and Buster Rhymes. How did that one come about? Um, Buster told me that he wanted to use the Just Rhyming with Viz joint, and you know, um, flip it. You know, you know, he was like, you know, put your shit to it. I was like, alright. So I, um, I put the verse to it, and then he hit me and was like, yo, um, Flex played it. Conway heard it and he want to put a verse to it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, yo, tell, tell, dude, I'm a fan, man. Yeah, yeah. And then Conway put his verse to it and we shot a video. Yeah. And lastly, the one thing I want to ask the older MC is like self destruction. You're familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. Famous song. And now we live in a time with drugs and violence is at all time high. If you were able to put like a self destruction of this version, a generation like 2024. Maybe three MCs you would want to put on there? Self-destruction 2024? Um, uh, definitely, for one, I would definitely want um, one of the Migos, you know, due to circumstances. I would definitely want one of the Migos on there. Um, little Baby. Um... Kendrick, mm -hmm. Kendrick, I think he's amazing at those type of issues when it comes to like approaching those type of, you know, uh, yeah, Kendrick. Those would be three. Yeah. It's hard. Like to fight the power <clears throat> song. Yeah, yeah I knew it. Yeah, we all in the same game with like the West Coast version. I think that, you know, um, hearing one of the Migos on, on, on on a song like that would be very heartfelt, you know? And then um, with Little Baby, like, um, I, I can't remember the song, like, my, my, my son listens to him, and it was something that he was playing. Black and white song was bigger than black and white? I can't, don't, don't. Bigger picture. Yeah, bigger but it was something my son was playing with Little Baby, and, I, like, he was flowing, like, I was like, oh. I was like, dude, come rhyme, rhyme. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah.
honor. And I, I appreciate another aspect of your show, uh, B-Boy Top, man. Just the aspect <laughs> of that, because that brother was on the head just every time. I think that's like my other, my favorite part, besides him coming to bring you the coat. But when he come and do his one-two and you let your DJ rock, yeah. man, that was monumental. Because even on that Rock the Bells cruise, EPMD had, you know, DTA, but then they brought DJ Scratch. Yeah, I heard that you scratch it. So, so what you're saying? With yeah, that's and, and, that's beautiful. We was on there with, you know, it's the older folk, but then they like, Big Daddy came next. I'm thinking the room was going to empty, man. Them same people stayed in that same room and watched you, and you gave them a hell of a show, man. So just love and respect. All right, no. <laughs> Why the hell you think the room was going to empty? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I think it's the people were older. I thought it was the people were older. Hey, hey, ain't no half stepping, bro. You know it is. That's a suck MC, man. That's a suck MC move, man. That's a suck MC. I'm messing with you, baby. Yo, that's whack, man. You was a whack MC that time. Hey, you see why he's sharp on the mic? Hey, shit slide by it, man. Cold chillin'. Records. Oh, shit, it's a hard ass name, bro. That's gonna be one for the books. What do you man. think when you hear Cold Chillin' Records? You know, I mean, that was like, you know, one of those slang words from back, back in the day. Yo, I'm Cold Chillin'. Yeah, <laughs> and do it just like that, too. You ain't lying. That's exactly how we do it. Cold Chillin'. Man, yeah. I, can ask, I can ask you questions all day, man. This is, this is crazy, man. <laughs> Don't, hey, this got to be part. Well, you got to come back. Come back, bro. You got to come back. Anytime, man. Anytime, man. I enjoy it. Whenever this, you in or around the city, bro. I don't Please. give a damn if you wake up and remember some shit. Call me. Oh, yeah, and another thing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to tell you about this fucker. <laughs> Whack him, <MC. laughs> <laughs> Well, man, it, it's been an honor and a privilege, man. Anything you want to leave him with before we wrap this up? Social um, media, anything? Nah, man. I, all, all I want to say is that you know, um, I appreciate everybody um, keeping hip hop alive, and I hope you continue to do that. And please remember that you know everybody's entitled to their own opinion. You know, people can post their top five, their top ten, but you know everybody's entitled to like who they want to like, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about music, having the ability to have different artists that can touch your soul, you know, and um, touch different emotions, you know? So, I mean, I don't think there's no wrong or no right top five, it's just yours, mine, his, hers, you know? And, um, oh, and also keep your eyes out for my um, hip hop documentary, Paragraphs I Manifest, which, you know, features, of course, myself, um, Jay Z, J. Cole, Snoop Dogg, Common, Eminem, uh, Lady London, Goods the Animal, A Verb, um, ah, and others. Well, we've we been watching it. that battle rap, huh? Battle rap, huh? We've been watching that battle rap. Huh? Well, it's about lyrics. It's about lyrics, you know. Oh. So, I, you know, we had a chance to sit and talk about battle rap today versus battle rap, you know, back in the days. Mm, right. And all that stuff, yeah. you know, the difference. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. I gotta see this. What's it, what, where, we can, where can we catch it? Uh, well, we, we're in the editing process okay, right man. now. All right. You know, yeah. Well, shit, when you drop it, come back. Come back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We gotta get you That's to sign the come table. Back. I know you see we got everybody who done stopped through the, through the trap and them blessings, man. We gotta find you a spot and go crazy. Very well. Yeah. Where you see. Okay, I'm good right here. Space, bro. Yeah. Oh, okay, bet, bet. Okay, bet. Guys, now it's official. We got nothing but legends stopping through the trap. You see the type of shows that we having over here. If you ain't bringing legends through your show, cut it out. 85 South Show. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Bro, thank you, fam. No, I really appreciate it, bro. Thank you, bro. That was fun, baby. That was fun, bro.